Yo, what up? Welcome to Made by Ozzy. I'm Ozzy, and this is a channel we're developing crypto mining so uh, firmware and GPU rendering, you know, graphics rendering firmware for this development kit. It's a CE0-DV development kit. Um, and today, look guys, I was really hoping this week that I would be able to put out a video on finishing up our R32 channel, because the last thing we need is just a, a, a buffer module so that we could read, you know, more than one byte and we could send back more than one byte. Because right now we have receive working, we have transmit working, but only for one byte. So as I was preparing that module, um, I had to make a one-shot module. A one-shot's real simple. I'll go over what it is. We're going to write it right. Um, but it, a, a one-shot is the first example of a module that we've written on this, uh, in, on this channel that we cannot test with the physical verification. So far, we have been verifying all of our Verilog modules somehow right and we've had the, the luxury of being able to verify them with built-in hardware on our dev kit um, and what that means is we have you know leds and we have the seven segment displays so we've been able to physically see that the fpga is doing what we expect it to do for one shot it's not so simple for one shot we're expecting to trigger a pulse that's only one clock period it's not so simple to tie it to a physical output you know i can't just tie it up to an led and verify you know with my eye that it's one clock uh pulse so um, so for that, uh, Cordis provides a built-in simulation tools. We actually need to go download it and install it. But you know, uh, so today what we're going to do is we're going to write that one-shot module, and then we're going to build a simulation to verify it. And you know, we're going to go through all the steps of installing it, creating a simulation, and and running it. And um, and then okay, so that'll set us up for for a lot. You know, a lot of stuff in the future we're going to have to simulate. Um, so it's good to get this out of the way right now, and we're going to need a one-shot module. Uh, the buffer is the first area where we're going to need it, but I I'm, imagine I'm going to need it a lot. So, all right, there's a lot to do today. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is come back over here to the Intel website so I could download this model sim Intel FPGA edition. Um, uh, another bit of, it's like an extension for the Cordis uh, software, um, but check it out. Software downloads are not currently working for Chrome, so I need to do the unthinkable and use Edge. Uh, so here's the same page on Edge, and I'm just going to download this. Okay, so the download's all done. It's in the same folder as where I had originally downloaded the Cordis Lite setup and that Cyclone 5 device support. So let's just see if I double click this, what happens? Okay, press next. Uh, model sim. Uh, license is not required. Yeah, that's what I want, right? No requirement. I do accept that agreement. Um, okay, yeah, that seems as good a directory as any. Um, and go ahead and hit install. All right, all installed. Okay, and I'm pretty sure to actually make my Cordis um, setup recognize it, I have to run the installer application again. Next, uh, yes, I accept the agreement. Uh, yet, that's the same folder where I already have it. Um, yes, because I want to update that installation. And here, I'm gonna go ahead and actually select this model sim starter edition. Let that install. Uh, yes, so that's good. Um, okay, so I don't need to launch the USB blaster installation. I already did that. I already have my shortcut, um, and uh, I'm going to launch it right now. Okay, all done. Okay, so what is a one-shot? And that's actually pretty uh, simple. It's if we have a signal coming in that's going to last uh, what, one or more clock cycles, we want to generate an output signal that's only going to turn um, high for one clock cycle and then turn low again until this input signal has turned low and then gone back high. So it's a, you know, you might call this like a rising edge pulse or something. It's a, um, something that's only gonna be high for one clock pulse on the rising edge of this signal here. Um, and I'm just calling it a one shot or a rising edge is another name for it. So how do we actually do that? What we can do is if we can generate a signal that is the same length as our input signal, um, but delayed one clock cycle, then we could uh, get the output that we want by just taking the AND of our input signal and this uh, lagged signal, the one that's lagged by one clock cycle. So let's go see how we're gonna do that. Okay, so I got the Cordis project open, uh, copper here. So let's go make a new Verilog file. Okay, um, and then we'll just name this module one shot. And standard inputs, clock and reset. And we're gonna have a signal in and we're gonna have a signal out. I'll just, you know, 
very creative names, right? Okay, keyword and module. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and save this right now. So I have that taken care of over here in library. One shot, okay, cool. Um, let's define the inputs and outputs. Uh, define IO, uh, input clock, reset and signal in. Um, and then output, I'm gonna make this a register because I want it to synchronize with the clock, obviously. Um, don't need that, it's one bit wide, so just the one bit, okay. Um, and so I need to create that lagged signal, so let's create a local stuff, right? I'm gonna create a local register and just call it lagged signal because um, I'm gonna need something for, for this guy right here, right? Okay, um, that sounds easy enough. Okay, so now let's do our logic. Logic, the boilerplate stuff, right? Always at uh, positive edge clock, uh, begin, end, always. And then of course we always have our reset condition. Uh, if uh, not reset, begin, end, um, then if not reset, then else, begin, end. Um, if uh, reset, I guess. Okay, um, so here, if not reset, then let's reset our output here to zero. Just standard reset stuff, signal out to zero, and then a uh, lag signal also to zero. Standard stuff. Okay, now what can we do to make this lagged signal be one clock cycle beh um, behind our input signal here? Um, and that's actually easy. It's just as simple as uh, declare or you know um, assigning the value of signal in to lagged signal. So note that this will always delay one because uh, when that for that first clock cycle, when signal in turns high, lagged signal will still be zero. So this will always have a lag of of one clock cycle before this is catch you know catches up with uh, the signal in here. So um, this sort of inherently handles it. Um, and now what else do we need to do? We need to uh, take a signal and we need to and it with the not of this lagged signal. So, um, and that's actually gonna define our output. So it's as simple as signal out. It's gonna be assigned to a uh, lagged signal and the not of this, uh, um, oh, I cut backwards, right? It's gonna be uh, the and of si the signal in and the not of lagged signal, right? It's gonna, there's the signal in and there's our lagged signal and our signal in is here and our lagged signal and we're taking the and of the signal with the not of the lagged and um, all right, that works. Okay, and actually I shouldn't forget the semicolon while I'm here. Um, okay, and look, I actually just noticed this little message demo ram.qip in the last video I made a, um, a, a ram file and um, uh, I, it was by default created in this uh, the project folder main FPGA. I made this folder here RAM modules and moved everything into there. See there it is. But here Cordis is telling me it can't find it. So I'm gonna have to fix that in the project settings at some point. Um, I won't handle that quite yet. So what do I do now? I wrote this little one shot and I want to simulate it, right? Um, so you know normally you've seen me do things like go to file and create a symbol for this, but I'm not gonna do that in this case. In fact, what we're gonna do here is we are going to, in order to simulate something, we need to synthesize it. But how are we gonna synthesize just this one module? Cause whenever we, whenever we press synthesize, it, um, it does the whole pro the whole uh, top level, right? This, everything that's in this PDF here. And, but it only does that because we define this copper.bdf as our top level entity. Um, and what that means is, uh, um, you could, you know, we have a bunch of projects in this Cordis uh, file, right? We have, you know, everything in all of these. Any one of these Verilog files could be our top level entity. Um, it just so happens that ours is this BDF file. It's, uh, you know, and, and no, as far as FPGA programming in Cordis goes, BDF and Verilog implement the exact same logic just by different ways. Um, so what we do here is we go here to um, project. Uh, with, we we have one shot selected, so we go to project and set as top level entity. And now here it is, one shot is selected as our top level entity for the project. And if we were to try and compile the whole thing, it would fail because in order to accurately compile, you have to, um, uh, you, you know, actually map to pins, the input and output pins that we defined in the QSF file. Um, and we don't have that, right? We just have these generically named clock, reset, signal in. 
Um, so we're only going to do this first step, analysis and synthesis. And so instead of hitting compile, I'm going to hit uh, two over, start analysis and synthesis. All right, and I'll just uh, let that run. All right, cool, successful synthesis. Okay, so now how are we going to simulate what we just synthesized? So what we're going to do is create a new waveform file. So we go to file, new, um, and then we're going to look for right here in verification and debugging. What we're going to create is a university program VWF. Um, go ahead and create that. And it's, you know, just a blank waveform. And so what we need to do is add the inputs and outputs of the thing we just um, created. So um, I'm going to, uh, so I double click over in this left column area, um, and then I'm going to press node finder. And here I'm telling it to look for all nodes because that little asterisk means everything and then look in all file, um, yeah, relevant files. Um, okay, now press list and it found everything, right? Clock, reset, signal in and signal out. So I want all of these. So press here to move them all. All right. And now it's going to add them to, well, we added it here and then we'll add it here. Great. Now I need to actually create my sample inputs uh, for my inputs, which are going to be used to calculate what my output would be if that was the input to receive. So for clock, I'm just going to, that's a simple, right? It's just a little square wave. Um, so I'm going to select the whole thing by double clicking, or you could right click and select entire waveform interval like this, you know? Um, so there I'm going to select the clock and then I'm going to assign a value of overwrite clock. Um, and here you can set the time step. So I'm going to do 20 nanoseconds. So it's actually the same as our actual clock. Cool. All right. Now for reset, I'm just going to set the whole thing to high. So value forcing high because I, I just don't want to test reset. I know reset works just fine. And um, in order for it to not mess everything up, it needs to be high, right? So for signal in, let's create a couple test conditions. Uh, so that, that's, you know, some random signal, right? Th there's one. Let's force that area to be high. Um, so if our one shot works, we expect just this one little, well, I guess two of them because that's a whole clock period, two of them would be, uh, um, high. Um, so, and then, you know, maybe over here I have, uh, you know, just these two that are, uh, high, you know, uh, and then maybe here I have a much longer one, you know, um, and a special case, which I really want to test is, uh, um, with just one clock period between them. So you see what I mean? Um, so if, if the one shot works, I should get a high here and it should go low for one clock period and then go high again for this other one, even in a situation like this. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this file, save. Um, and I'm gonna make a new folder here for simulations. Um, simulations. And this is going to be um, one shot simulation. Okay. Okay. Now, if we try and hit simulation here, we're not, we're going to do. We got two options. We got functional, and we have timing. And we're going to run functional. And um, I I keep getting this error here that it can't find. Um, it's an invalid path, or the path doesn't exist. Test bench vector input does not exist. And this that we specified right here, this is basically the test bench vector input. These We, we just drew it as a waveform. Um, so I think to fix this, I've been browsing some forums. Go to simulation settings, and what happened is it's because I changed the name. Um, so the default name was like waveform.vwf. I changed it to one-shot simulation. But here in the settings or whatever, um, it did not update. Look, there it is, waveform.vwf. So let's see if I just update it here. Will this fix it? And then there's another spot to make sure there's nothing else. There's another down here though I know. Okay, let's go ahead and change it there as well. One, one shot dot, not dot, underscore simulation. Okay, save. All right, now let's try this again. Has it been modified? Yes, I want to save the changes and let it run. Error again. Okay, um, let's try hitting reset, uh, default, restore defaults. Okay, um, let's see if that works. Save that. Let's try this one more time. Yes, save that and run. Error. Okay. 
non-existent directory path qsim simulations qsim dash simulations oh i see okay it's because it made the qsim folder here all right man cordis you are not making this easy okay let's see if we could change this again um where is that path okay so maybe i don't want it here maybe i want it in my simulations um oh i see it's because of this right here okay okay so it made you know I, i'm sort of messing things up here and, and forgive me but um what ended up happening is i made this folder simulations cordis made this other folder simulation um you're allowed to have one anyway so you have qsim and there's no folder simulations in here it's trying to make this output file in the directory simulation so i'll just fix that okay one more time yes save and yes run all right, so it looks like we're making some progress. And an error, great. What is this error? Okay. Okay, so uh, failed to open design unit file. Um, no such file or directory. Okay, so again, it's a path error. Cordis, gotta help me out here i'm trying to make a whole video series about using you and you're sitting here making it impossible to use you not not very uh not very good marketing here intel okay screw it i am actually just going to remake this whole damn thing because uh i really just can't with quarters anymore file uh new and i'm, I'm just not going to change the default name i wonder if that's uh you know the stupid thing that i need to do to make it work okay exact same process let's go add all the nodes list them all yes okay um and before i even set anything up let's see if i just save this i'll save it here in the simulation folder they made it won't change any name okay if i run it will it actually run error man this is this is quite useless wouldn't you say okay it's again it's a path error okay let's see if i could uh just if i just fix the defaults here restore defaults save Okay, run, it's gonna ask me to save, yes. Okay, same, some another error. Okay, why don't we take a little snipping of this. I can save it, get rid of this, go back to simulation and see what is the problem now, Cordis. Forgive me, I'm getting quite frustrated with Cordis here. Again, again, look, it, it's, it keeps putting in another directory for no reason. Okay, change that, save, run. Okay, there's one step further. Let's see if it'll actually finish. Error. <sighs> no such file or directory, simulation waveform. Okay. Yeah, there's a VWF, but not a VWF.t, because that is in here, because that's in QSIM. Hmm. Yeah, it's looking in the wrong one. Okay, so how do I fix that? Let's see. Where even are my options? Um... There it is in QSIM. So here in my actual properties, I have it looking at the correct directory, but for some reason, it keeps trying to look at a different directory. Okay, maybe I literally have to do the stupidest thing ever. Here, let's actually try it. Cordis, if this works, Intel should just be thoroughly ashamed of themselves for being so stupid. This is probably the stupidest, stupidest thing. Okay, I moved it into there. Let's see what happens. Error. I mean, I, I shouldn't be surprised by this point, right? Okay, so 
I guess I need to remove this uh, um, NOV opt option. <laughs> oh man, oh man, Intel. Oh jeez. I mean, maybe I could just send them this video as part of a um, tech support line. Jeez. Uh, okay, looking for an NOV OPT um, directive somewhere. Where would that be? Okay, I don't see that directive anywhere. I, what am I gonna do here? What am I gonna do, huh? Is it right there? Can I edit it directly right there? There it is. Okay, let's see if that works. Save, run. Okay, I got an output. Hip, hip, hooray. That's, uh, <laughs> oh man, okay. All right, let's actually set this up the way it needs to be. Value, clock. Um, I'm just gonna leave it 10 because it actually looks nicer here. Uh, reset the entire thing, high. Uh, just make any arbitrary, you know, points high. Um, and, you know, here I actually wanna test, since I didn't make it 20 seconds, it's only the, the single line. I wanna test two in a row like this and just another one somewhere else. Okay. Save this, and let's run that functional simulation again. It did not update the vector inputs. Okay, why did it not update the vector inputs? Oh, jeez. Okay. It's, I, I can't save it. It's already saved. What happens if I run it again? Oh, I know what happens. Okay, I know exactly why this happened. Wow, I could not be more disappointed until, yeah, I didn't update anything. Why? Because I had to manually move this file into here, and it made a new one when I changed it. There it is, a new one. Um, so I'm going to press Control-C, copy it into here, Control-V, yes, replace it. Okay, now I should be able to run and get my real output. Okay, all right, this is, uh, this is great. Okay, so... Here we have something. We finally have uh, something that works how I want it. Um, but look, good thing we actually simulated this because if I hold control, I could scroll and zoom in and you see, we're actually delayed. We're delayed by half a, half a period. Um, actually, no, we're not. My clock is just funky. So this is, uh, oh, okay. I'm not actually drawing it where I thought I was gonna draw it. Uh, this actually is exactly what we want. Um, let me see if I could fix my clock and do it a little bit better. So this is, I want to select the whole thing. So let's select the entire waveform. And I think I want to change the um, uh, offset here by 10 nanoseconds. Yeah, so now my, uh, no, not by 10, by five. By five nanoseconds. So that way my rising edges actually line up with where I want them to line up. Okay, so let's do this one more time. Save, and you know what, this isn't gonna work. I'm gonna run functional simulation runtime. It's not gonna update the way I expect it to. Right, because again, I need to go manually overwrite this. Oh man, what a, what a disappointing step. Okay, control C in the simulation, control V, yes, replace. Okay, now I run it one more time. And, okay, we're delayed by one full clock cycle. Good thing we tested this. Let's go debug what, you know, after all that headache, it's, I'm really glad we went through this effort because, look, we're not getting exactly what we want. We don't want to be delayed one clock cycle. Although this would technically work for what we want it for, but we don't want that. Um, so let's go debug why this is happening. Okay, and if you uh, go back here, I'm pretty sure it's because, you know, so I, I know I get one cycle delayed lag if I do it this way, if I assign a register, um, because it's going to use, uh, um, or it's always just going to be one cycle lagged. So obviously I have one cycle lagged here. So what I can do actually is, um, here, let's try this. How about instead of making it a register, I make it a straight up wire, which means I can't assign it in here. But I can now just assign it always to that same logical state that I want. Um, except, of course, I, it's a wire now, so I need to use the assign keyword, and I don't use this one. I use the normal one. Um, 
Okay, uh, that should do it. Let's hit save. Uh, let's try and resynthesize re this one. Okay, now let's try and, uh, um, you know, simulate it. And again, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to go through that whole, uh, you know, dumb process of, um, okay, I'm going to have to run the functional simulation. Oh, yeah, and I don't actually have to because I, it didn't change the, uh, the vector waveform that I specified. It only changed the, um, the code that I am, uh, uh, you know, testing. So I didn't have to go through and change it, but this is good. Okay, look, it fixed it. Um, control scroll with your mouse wheel, and you can see now this is exactly what I want. Um, okay, hooray, great. Okay, man, I really hope, if anyone that actually works at Intel is watching this, then, oh my God, uh, please take this, this as very constructive feedback and fix the damn software. Like, uh, the, the fact that it's trying to change it to a whole different directory is just, I mean, that's amateur crap. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm a software developer and I would not release a product like that to market. Did anyone at Intel actually use it? Um, obviously not. So anyway, at least, okay, so there's a few tips and tricks, right? You need to go, if you decide to change the, the file where you want to save your simulations, you're going to have to do a whole lot of, uh, you know, dumbassery to get it to work with the um, Intel, you know, model sim software. Um, and then there, there's that one where I had to delete that NOV OPT directive, which, I mean, all right. If you're watching this video, at least you have a little step-by-step -step guide on how to overcome all of these headaches and actually get a simulation working. Thank goodness. Um, and you know, we made a new files. Um, if you wanna, there is a GitHub. Everything that I did today that you saw in the video today is already live up on the GitHub. The link is in the description. You could go clone it and get completely up to speed with everything we have written so far. Uh, we have uh, you know a bunch of uh, modules already working. The RS32 communication channel is, is mostly fleshed out on the next episode of this is where we're finally going to finish the receive buffer and i'm pretty excited for that because that's actually the very last step in our in our core you know or central fpga package after that finally we'll be able to get into some serious crypto um okay so if you like what you see you know I mean, whatever just hit like hit subscribe thank you so much for watching helps me grow the channel if you hit like if you subscribe um uh leave a comment tell you know let me know what you think of what you saw you know did you like it are you learning something do you have questions um do you want to complain at intel because join me and you know just you know let's just all talk let's all talk crap on intel right i see on like you know on the reddit rfpga everyone's talking crap on zillinx and you know um the tool chains provided by zillinx and intel and uh Maybe now this will give you a first-hand experience as to why everyone's always complaining about those things. But anyway, hit like, hit subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. I hope I see you guys next time. Goodbye.